everybody, welcome back to the Engineered Angler. Today I'm gonna make a rig, or actually a topwater lure, kind of a rig, to replace this thing. And if you've never seen one of these things before, it's essentially a bobber on a stiff piece of wire with beads and metal balls, so it makes a racket. This one specifically is a Cajun Thunder, but most people call them popping corks or just cork rigs. And there's always a length of line with a jig on the end. And people either use soft plastics or live bait or cut bait. And typically it's used in shallow water, five feet, four feet for shallow water species like trout or redfish. The idea is that when you pull this really hard, it makes a racket in the water and then your bait drops down in the water and suspends down there and that attracts the bite. But it has one major drawback and another drawback that I want to correct. When you cast it, it tends to helicopter around itself and that really limits your cast and on a day like day, today where it's kind of breezy, you're going to really have a short cast with these things. The other thing is that the racket really attracts the fish and a lot of times the trout will hit on the bobber itself and there's nothing there to get hooked up on. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a topwater lure that I can rig this way that will absolutely not helicopter and if it gets hit, it'll hook up on the fish. So if that's interesting to you, stick around. So if you're new to the channel, my name's Franco. I'm a professional engineer, a lure designer, and a lure maker, an avid fisherman. And I make these videos to share some of my techniques and some of the things I've learned and to add a little bit of engineering and physics to the art of lure making. So let's get straight to the concept. So my idea is to replace that float with a traditional popper body. Now I know there have been rigs around for a long time that I think people called popper droppers where you continue to have a tail hook, but on the belly hook eye, you tie on some form of jig head with something on it. But with this kind of setup, you still have the potential for this thing to really just helicopter when you cast it. And you've got this added hook that could capture the line and foul things up even more. So here's my idea. I want to drill a hole all the way through the lure just like a through wire. And like a through wire, I'll have a connecting hole in the belly where I'm going to go ahead and place a barrel swivel and that'll allow me to put a hook on the belly and that should be clear of a line. Now instead of a wire going through here, I'm just going to go ahead and feed my leader line and I'm going to use probably 40 or 60 pound leader line. This end will go off to the jig head and this end will have a barrel swivel which in turn gets tied to my main line. I'll probably put a couple of beads and that'll protect the line when I'm pulling it and it'll also give the whole rig a little more noise. So besides being able to get this thing to cast a little farther, I think the greater benefit from this kind of a setup is that I have a direct line all the way through to my bait. It isn't connected to the float. And so when something hits that bait, I'm gonna feel it directly through the line. That should lead to better hookups. And that direct connection to the jig will allow me to play the jig and not the bobber. And so I can move the rod tip a little bit and it'll be sliding this line back and forth and that jig up and down in the water column. That'll give you a little more finesse and maybe attract more bites. So I wanna be able to use a jig head up to 3 eighths of an ounce plus the weight of that bait, whatever it is, whether it's a soft bait or a chunk of meat. So the material I use has to be really light, has to be really buoyant, and I don't want to have to worry that I have to seal the inside of this thing because it's going to have that open channel through the middle. So I don't want to use wood, so what I'm using is fake wood. This is a PVC board used in trim around houses. It's one and a half by three quarters of an inch, and I'm going to cut two seven inch pieces, and then I'll glue it together with some PVC glue, clamp it for about an hour, and then put it on the lathe. Now this is a real simple shape and so I'm not going to bore you with a bunch of lathe footage. I'll come back to you when I've got the shape in my hand. Now, 
All right, so I've gone ahead and drilled that hole all the way through. Now I started that drilling on the lathe, but because my lathe bed is too short, I can't drill all the way through. So I have to finish it by hand. And that's always a little tricky because it wants to drift on you, but I got it pretty much where I wanted it, slightly above center on the, on the face and slightly below center on the tail. But the bit broke and this thing came flying out of the lathe and flew across the shop. So it got a few dings in it, but I was able to smooth it out more or less, but we're just gonna go with it. This is a prototype and this is the very first one I'm building. This is a brand new concept for me and I've actually never seen it anywhere else. That's not to say it doesn't exist somewhere, but I'm taking you guys along for the experimental ride. Not sure how well it'll work, but I've got a good feeling about this. So I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time in detail and aesthetics. If you guys have been watching this channel for a while, you know I'm more about the functionality of the lure, not so much about the looks. What I'm gonna do to reinforce the holes going in and out at the ends is to add the aluminum sleeve part of a rivet into that hole. And of course I'll remove the rivet rod and I'll do it on the hole where I'm gonna put the swivel for the belly hook. All right. Here I've drilled a little flat spot, not for an eye, but for the rivet, so it sits flat in the body. I've also marked two spots across from each other, and those are gonna be where the eye sockets go. All right, so I just want these eye sockets to be shallow and kind of subtle. All right. All right, so I'm gonna be using a couple of different styles of rivets. I'm gonna use this quarter inch by half inch for the belly and two of these 3 16th by one and a quarter for the two ends. And to use them, I'm gonna to have to take the pin out of them and I'll show you how to do that. All right, so there's no big trick about it. You just grab a hold of it with a pair of pliers, set the pin on a hard surface and then just give this a tap. And that pin usually comes right out. Right, so these things are almost ready to use. So I would like the ends of these things not to be so blunt because I have to run the line all the way through the lure and I'm afraid it'll kind of snag on this edge. So I want it to be beveled inside, kind of like a funnel. This is a countersinking bit and all I'm doing is countersinking that hole into a cone. And that should do it. All right, so I'm gonna be using a number three swivel and I pinch that loop just a little bit so it'll slide into that rivet real easy. And then the end loop will keep it from going any farther. All right, because I can only go in this far with the rivet, I'll have to trim it off right there. I'll just have to smooth those edges. And that's what's nice about aluminum. A little bit of sandpaper makes quick work of it. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and just temporarily insert some rivets into the hole so I have a way to hold on to it while I paint. Before I paint, I wanna go ahead and put a clear coat on it just to smooth the surface a little bit because it is a little bit rough. All right, you'll notice that I bent the little rivet rods. And if you're gonna try to do it, you gotta heat those up to get them to bend, otherwise they're too brittle. Now I'm not going for a perfect clear coat on this thing. I'm just looking for a surface that's smoother than what I already have. All right, I'll let that rotate without the lights on for a little bit. And then I'll turn the lights on, give it about an hour. And then when I get back to it, we'll put a paint job on it. All right, it's been about two hours, which is way more than it needed. So it's a pretty smooth and shiny finish. There's still a couple little wonky spots, uh, but I'm just gonna give it a light sanding with 220 and I'll wipe it down and then we'll go straight to the uh, painting booth. All right, I've got it sanded, but before I go ahead and start painting, let me go ahead and show you what I mean by figuring out how much buoyant force this has. I need to know how much weight this thing will actually float. Now, typically what I do is I'll have the density of the material I'm using, and then I'll weigh the lure itself, and then I'll use those two numbers to calculate what the buoyant force is. But the way I'm gonna show you is a direct measurement. It was suggested by one of you guys who wrote it in one of the comments, and I thought it was a really simple way to do it, and I thought I'd share it. So we'll need a scale that has a big enough range that it can weigh at least 500 grams of water and you'll need a container of water that's long enough so that you can suspend the lure in it 
I'm gonna put a couple of drops of just mild detergent in here and I'm gonna stir that in. And what the soap will do is it'll break the surface tension of the water. Basically what it'll do is it'll reduce the number of bubbles that hang onto the side and on the inside of the lure. And this way you get a more accurate reading. And make sure there's enough room at the top for the displaced water. Otherwise it's gonna overflow. Now with the water on there, I'm gonna go ahead and tear it or zero it. So now I'm gonna shove this thing down in the water, but I'm not gonna let it touch the bottom. I just wanna get the lure all the way in and not touching the bottom of the sides. I'm gonna give it a little time so the bubbles can pop off. So 54.2, so 54.2 grams is the buoyant force this thing will put out. Let's find out how much it'll actually weigh. And then we'll know how much excess buoyancy it'll have to float the jig that's gonna be hanging off of it. So I've got it zeroed again. I'm gonna put the lure on here, the hook I intend to use, the rivet hardware, and the swivel. So 30.8, we'll call it 31. So now you have the only math you're gonna have to do, which is subtract 31 from 54, and you end up with 23. So 23 grams is a little over three quarter of an ounce. So I could actually float, just barely, a three quarter ounce jig head. So that's not gonna be a problem. I'm not gonna probably float anything bigger than absolutely maximum a half an ounce, typically a quarter to a three eighths of an ounce jig head. So that's gonna work. So I'm gonna start off with a bright yellow on the bottom. It's hard to read, but it's a tester's paint. And I want some overspray up to about uh, probably the one third part of the side of the body. I've put some scale screen on here and what I'm doing is painting it with this transparent blue and I'm starting off on top and wanting it to sort of overspray onto the yellow so I get a, a sort of a yellow green transition as the blue combines with the yellow and turns green. All right, that looks pretty cool. All right, now I'm gonna use some of this fluorescent orange and put in some sort of mackerel stripes right there at the transition of the blue and yellow. And I want the stripes mostly from the eyeball back. All right, that looks kinda cool. Now I'm gonna go in on top with some pearlescent blue. All right, so now I'm gonna put a double strike eye, a large dot in yellow and then a smaller dot in black. All right, that looks pretty cool. All right, I wanna use a little more fluorescent coloring. So this is a fluorescent hot pink and I've already started to put a little bit on the belly and the chin. And it really kinda almost glows in the dark. And now I wanna paint the inside of the pomper mouth with a bright red color. All right, I think that's pretty classic. Those are some pretty bold colors, I think. All right, so what do you think? Gold? or red. I like the red, but I also like the gold. I'm gonna go with the gold. All right, so I'm pretty happy with this, and I can't wait to see what it looks like when it's clear coated. Uh, it's probably gonna really pop. So now I'm gonna go ahead and give it a couple of coats of polyacrylic, then I'll clear coat it. And after the clear coat is set, we'll be able to assemble it with all the hardware. All right, so it's a new day and I left this thing setting up and drying. But during the night, I was thinking about the design of this swivel and hook and I, it occurred to me, and I don't know why I didn't realize this before, that if I have this swivel connected to this line, though this line going through the swivel, it's gonna give this line a lot of friction and it's not gonna allow the rig line down to the jig to move freely and to slide so that the jig can go up and down in the water column the way I want it to. But I still wanna have this hook on a swivel. So let me show you what I did. 
So what I've done is I've taken this swivel and embedded it in the rivet housing that I already set up. And then I took and bent over the eye on the backside so it can't come out. And I filled that whole cavity with epoxy resin. So it still spins real easily. So all I have to do is embed this in the lure and glue it in place with some five minute epoxy. All right, I'm pretty happy with that result. These guys are assembled and we're ready for a clear coat. All right, I've cleaned it off again, so I don't want to touch it anymore. And I've made these little, out of the original pins that were in the um, rivet, and I'm just gonna friction fit these things in there, just shove them in there. And this way I can hold it to clear coat it. It's cold outside, it's in the 40s. It's a good idea to heat this stuff up in the bottle too, if it's really chilly. All right, that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the turner. I can go ahead and turn on the lights. There, I'm gonna leave it for about an hour, hour and a half. In the meantime, I'm gonna collect a bunch of branches that fell during the hurricane and start a bonfire. Check out the hardware, it came out looking really nice. So I was gonna go with something really heavy like 40 or 60 pound monofilament, but I'm gonna go with this fluorocarbon. It's 30 pounds, I think it's strong enough and I, I like how supple it is. All right, so before I tie on the uh, swivel, I'm gonna put this brass ball on and a glass bead. And that should give us a little noise when we're working it. Now I can tie on my swivel. All right, so I really only want 31 inches sticking out of the back and I measured it right to there, so that's where I'm gonna tie my knot. First, I'm gonna put a, a glass bead on the back too. And I'm gonna tie on this flashy looking jig head. And the final bit of the rig, a soft plastic. All right. So the idea of the popper mouth wasn't so much to make it pop, it was to have drag as you pull this line so the lure doesn't move really easily. So I wanna have as much drag on this lure as possible, so I'm gonna dress up that treble hook so it adds to the drag. Alright, there we go. We're fully assembled. Let's take it down to the water. Alright, now it becomes really obvious why this thing won't helicopter. Because it's going to cast as a single piece. So the key to using it is allowing enough slack for the tail jig to go down and then sweeping the rod to bring it back up against the lure and then the lure pops and then you let it go down again. See the tail go down, comes back up, goes back down. Back up. So being able to play the jig while it's way out there is really a game changer. I'm really happy with the look of it. I'm really happy how it works. And I think not having the line go through the swivel was a key move. Can't wait to take this out in the Gulf of Mexico and do a little fishing, but I'll see you guys next Friday.